What's going on, everyone? It's Mike back again. And uh, yeah, today I just wanted to talk about the mentality, the change. Um, you know, I wanted to go through the two different managers that we've had and actually maybe even go back a little bit further and talk about how this Everton team, they seem to leave everything on the pitch. So I just wanted to go into that a little bit. Um, obviously, I did want to mention about the stadium as well because I do think we need to start looking forward. I know a lot of people have seen a lot of the comments the love, the support as always. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe video, uh, button as well. But um, it's really, really important that we talk about some of the other things that Everton have got going on because we all get consumed by a relegation battle and, and rightly so. You know, it's all a lot of us have thought about. Some of us have had sleepless nights. We've all had mood swings. Um, I know I was particularly bad after the Newcastle game. So, you know, we all know that this football club means a lot to us but we need to look at the bigger picture of, of what this means and I'm going to talk hypothetically here so I'm going to talk about if Everton are a Premier League team going forward next season we've got a stadium to look forward to we've got genuinely a world-class stadium to look forward to that's cost millions of pounds 720 million um, that first figure was was originally came out probably about a year ago when Farhad Mashiri made a comment, made a statement. Um, so we know the stadium is going to cost a lot of money, and it has done. And we know that there's people interested in investing in Everton, you know, MSP and Seven Seven Seven, etc. And it, it only strengthens that argument if Everton are a Premier League team. You know, the investment that can be used to either fund the stadium or, you know, all of the additional things that it can bring in terms of recruitment, player acquisitions. These are positive, positive moves, by the way, people. Like, these are good things. So there's lots of positives to do with the stadium. The investment, the future, the season ticket waiting list, the progression of this football club because look as much as we love the old lady as much as we love the history the ground the the, the atmosphere that Goodison has and creates a new stadium is going to add wonders to that and as long as we can make it our own quite quickly we'll have no problem you know this this stadium's different to many in the league where you're going to sit next to the pitch you know you see it at the West Ham stadium no disrespect to any of their fans by the way this is no, no dig at any of the fans but it's just not particularly close to the pitch. Arsenal's the same. You know, I, I sat there in the away end this season. I didn't think I was close to the pitch at all. You know, I, 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 I've seen, I've seen pictures of like the Etihad. I've seen pictures of all of these fairly new stadiums. And they just don't have the same atmosphere. And this is what I think Everton have got to do. They've got to be able to generate that really quickly, really aggressively as well. Make sure that the new stadium, Bramley Moor Dock, is an absolute staple of Everton. You know, you know you're going for a game at Everton. And this is where I'm going to talk about the mentality. Sean Dyche, has he done everything brilliantly? No, he has not. He has he's made poor tactical decisions, he's made poor selection choices, he's made at times horrendous substitutions but he's done a good job in getting these players to play for the shirt again because I've got to be honest I feel like for the first time in a long time this is a manager that he, he, he almost he almost gets the Moyes type aggression you know he almost gets the aggression to play for Everton want to play for Everton, want to win for Everton. And don't get me wrong, I haven't felt it for a long time at times. I, I felt disconnected from some of the players. I felt disconnected from some of the fans as a result of the comments to some of the players. And it's only natural. Everyone has different opinions. But Sean Dyche, whether you agree with everything he's done or not, and I do think he's made some bad errors. And I, I, I think Everton would actually have got more points if they'd have got a manager that probably has a little bit more of a mentality to win. You know, I, I feel like Emery at, at Aston Villa, they've had a bit of a blip. But I think if Emery had come into Everton, Everton would be okay. I think if a, a manager that has got a proven track record of winning, I think the mentality changes again. The difference is, though, it's the work rate. And, it, you know, no other player epitomises it like Dwight McNeil. You know, constantly running, constantly going backwards and forwards, looking for passes, shooting on sight, defending when needed. You know, he's done a phenomenal job over the last... 
do, do you know what I'm going to say? Since he's been brought back into the team, he's probably been the most improved player at Everton. He certainly, I've never felt let down by him. I've never sat there and gone, Dwight McNeil has let me down since Dyche has come in. Before that, under Lampard, yeah, I thought he was pants. I thought he was awful. You know, he really disappointed me at times. And I, and I would sit there and think, mm, this isn't good enough. This isn't acceptable. But actually, in hindsight, you know, he 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 sort of epitomises what we've needed. And I think he's got seven goals this season. I think he's got a few assists. And if I'm not mistaken, that's not far off of Charleston's number for last season. You know, so when we're talking about needing to replace goals, he's done it. You know, I think Dwight McNeil played something like 170 games for Burnley and scored 13 goals or scored seven goals. It weren't, a, it weren't a great record. He's come to Everton and he's done it in 33 games. Just Wikipedia it, you'll see. So I, I think he, he has made a big difference um, in terms of being more on the front foot, being able to go forwards and backwards and that passing ability. But Everton... Everton have got that, and when they've got Calvert-Lewin fit, the mentality to win the ball is also there, and that's why Calvert-Lewin being instrumental to, to, you know, we've seen it, he's been instrumental in getting points away from home this season, he absolutely has, winning flick-ons, winning headers, being physically strong against defenders, rolling defenders, and that mentality, that change, that switch, that's down to the coaching staff, that's down to, that's down to saying to them, this team needs to stay in the Premier League, the fans are doing their bit. You need to do yours. And Sean's always said that. Sean Dosh has always said that, that the fans have been brilliant. He's always he's always thanked us. He's always supported us. I'm not a massive Sean Dosh in, and I'm not a massive Sean Dosh out. I said that I would support the club through whatever difficult patch we went through, and I absolutely will and will continue to do so. But what I will say is it's really positive that this Everton team have just managed to find some form of solution to get the job done done seemingly I know I'm counting my chickens too early we've got three games left but I really do think that it's in our hands now and it clearly is obviously mathematically it's in our hands so the mentality change has been massive from Frank Lampard to Sean Dyche but then there's also another dynamic you know what has happened is Everton haven't really invested this season they haven't spent loads of money you know they've had a couple of loan signings in in January in um the, the summer in Vinagre and Cody. Cody did okay at the start, was a leader, then gets bought out of the team. Be interesting to see if Everton consider making him permanent for four and a half million. Who knows? Um, one of the other things I would say is I think Tarkowski at times has looked brilliant as a leader, but at times he's, he's not been great. I think Mina, you can argue, is definitely the best centre half for our football team. He's just never fit and it's disappointing that he's going. But there's three big players that you know, are, 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 are going to cost us a lot of money who are currently out on loan, or say, say three big players, there's at least two big players in Andre Gomez and Deli Alley. There is another one, I'm sure there is. El Gabarmin. You know, these are players that are on big money, big wages. I think it's 15 million in total, people. This is money that we could do with getting off the book. So this, again, big summer, big rotation. But again, it's the mentality change. I feel like Everton is a work in progress, a job to be done. And I feel like, actually, I feel like we're going to build a solid, aggressive team. It's not going to be pretty, though. And that's and that's the, the difficulty of it for me. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be attractive. But I do hope that we get it right. I feel like we're going to get it right. And... You know, there's all of the other positives around Everton, you know, the support for mental health, Everton in the community, just in general. Um, all of these positives are fantastic. Look, the biggest negatives are bored. We all know that. We all we we all literally can sit here and say that. But I am really positive that this football team might finally be going in the right direction, especially when there is some new investment with new board members on the board. There's rumours that Ken Wright won't be on the board and that the day that that happens will be a blessing to this football team. I'm, I, I will not cry, shed a tear for any of them, if I'm being totally honest, you know, and, and Mashiri is included in that. I will not cry at all if he left this club. Um, 
But I think what needs to happen is whoever does invest in Everton, this this money needs to go in. It needs to be given to people that know what they're doing, whether it be the stage and funding, whether it be player acquisitions, it doesn't matter. This team needs to solidify where it is. They need to build on it. And next season, as long as Everton can stay in the league, give me 12th, give me 13th, give me 14th, just like I asked for this season. Give me some stability to be a Premier League club. Stay up by mid-April, job done, tick the box, and then we go again next summer. That's what I'm hoping. So, guys, look, I'm leaving it there. Thank you for uh, tuning in, as always. Just a little little throw-in video there. Um, I said I'll try and do more. Um, I'm going to be on Beat the Drop. Well, by the time this video comes out, it'll be live. So make sure you go over and uh, have a watch of that. Make sure you put in the comments that you've come over to follow me. And uh, I'll see you soon, guys. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.